Hey guys, how's it going? We've got a beautiful load of pansies and violas. And I know some of you might remember when I recently said, I'm not gonna plant up that many spring containers this year because our spring is so late. And then, you know, before we know it, I'm gonna have to tear out spring containers in favor of summer plants that can handle our heat. But I just, I can't help it. I mean, could you help it? <laughs> Look at the faces on these flowers. They are just the sweetest. I love this one. This is like a little Easter basket mix, pastels. We've got lots of blue, white, kind of lavender colors, pale yellow, and the pink. This is a perfect spring palette. And honestly, I think that violas and pansies are one of the most efficient and inexpensive ways to fill spring containers because these are going to be going in window boxes on our north side of our house and on the south side of our house they can take sun they can take shade they can take the cold like we've been down last night was 27 tonight i think it's supposed to be 28 and they might look a little like oh in the morning like a little bit sad and then they perk back up by mid-morning and they look awesome uh, they can't go through our extreme heat in the summer so you know by midsummer they would start to fizzle but they don't fade as fast as like primrose do for us they just are a really nice plant and you can usually find them in four and six packs for pretty good price so that's what we're going to do benjamin we are going to fill up the window boxes with these flowers yep, yep. Mm-hmm, it's gonna look pretty. So what I have been doing here is three flats of the pink that are bigger flowers. I have three flats of the little yellow violas, three flats of the blue, and then only one flat of kind of that Eastery mix with the purple. I'm almost thinking these might be pretty behind the Hartley and those two shallow urns. That would be really nice if we have them left over. These are the window boxes I'm thinking. There are three on this side and three on the other side of the house. We recently did Okay, so this is kind of funny. One, it looks like it has a skirt. We recently planted the kitchen window box, and when I saw it was supposed to be 27 degrees, I ran out and got a piece of this little frost cloth, and I, you can see I tucked it in around the base, and I'm going to cover it tonight as well, but it's easy. You just flip this up over the plants, and then they do fantastic. I mean, this is after 27 degrees. Looking pretty good. I mean, this doesn't look awesome, but it's temporary. And right there, I have two spent flower arrangements from inside of the house that need to go out into our pile and rustle. I usually hold off on spring containers until the nighttime temperatures are hovering right around 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right around freezing. Nothing too much lower than that. The range between 28 and 32, that's considered a light frost. Anything 28 and under is a hard frost. And honestly, most of the stuff you can get your hands on right now, uh, like the hellebores, pansies, violas, primrose, all of those things can take it pretty cold. They can take right around the freezing mark and maybe a little bit under if they're protected. But like last night, when it gets under that hard frost marker, that's when I put the frost cloth out. And most years, I don't find myself in a position to need to put the frost cloth out because we warm up a lot earlier than this typically. Uh, but it's been lovely. We've had tons of moisture. It's been a really good start to the year and I'm, I'm loving it. In fact, after we're done with these containers, these window boxes, if we have time, I'll show you the other three over here, we are gonna go start our four to six week annual seeds in the greenhouse. These are the other three right here. See, we've got some sidewalk chalk, a croquet set. There's a, some other kind of toy, I don't know. It's kind of a good toy area because the kids love to play right up here. Yep. <laughs> Another thing, we already have potting soil in most of these window boxes that's fairly fresh. So I'm just gonna top them up with compost and kind of mix that in to recharge the soil instead of 100% changing the soil out. And that's why I'm only doing the window boxes on either side and not the ones right in front of me. These right here and these pots because I think that those are do for a full soil change out, which we normally do once a year for every container. I usually will get a couple of seasons out of the same soil by just topping it up when I'm getting ready for my next you know, phase of flowers. But once a year, I like to clean it all the way out and get fresh stuff put in. So now we just need to divvy these up.
All done, I could not be happier with these containers. They look so sweet and fresh, full of color, and I was able to do these three window boxes, the three on the other side, and the two containers flanking the door in the portico, and I still have a flat and a half of plants left. I don't even know how. Well, I do know how. When you get four and six packs of plants, even though I'm still planting them very close together, they expand out, and these already look like they are brimming. I mean, look at that. Isn't that the sweetest thing? Oh, it just brings so much life to this side of the house. This is the north side. This side receives just a very small amount of sun in the morning, and then it's in shade the rest of the day. So this one is six foot. These are four. So we did four four footers, one six footer and one three footer on the other side. And I wanna, let me, let me add this up. I think I did one, two, three, four, five, six, six to seven of the six packs of the pink. And then we did one, two, three, four, five, six packs of blue and one, two, three, four, six packs of yellow. In the four foot boxes, they all match. I did one, two, three, four of the packs of these. One, two, three, four packs of blue and three packs of yellow. And these are the two containers I had enough for. Boy, these, I had ferns in here. There's no way they survived as exposed as they were. I didn't realize they were this exposed, dang. So these will get a complete clean out and fresh soil. These I did top up with land and sea. I didn't clean the floor very well because Samantha's napping and our blower is pretty loud, so I don't wanna wake her up. Look at that. I like leaving this obelisk as the centerpiece plant and just mounding it down below. Same with this one, excuse the mess. We still have a little pile of wood over here. We are still occasionally building fires, even though like today, I think the high was supposed to be 56. And I'm like, I'm perfect. I'm wearing a sweater plus a vest. I am in the shade. We did have a microburst when uh, I was out here. I don't know if I caught any of it on camera, but it was one of those like winds that I thought, what tree is gonna blow over? It was blowing wa my watering can and all my stuff all over the place. Anyway, uh, the wood we will probably leave out here for another couple weeks because we are still getting pretty chilly at night. And if we happen to have a day that's extra rainy and we're out here working, you get really chilled and it's nice to have a fire. And then on this side, so two more of the four footers and the one three footer right here. This is just such a sweet and bright blend. A couple of things I noticed while I was doing this planting project. One, I probably should have cleaned the house before, like the outside of the house before I started planting flowers. White houses, oh my goodness. When you're standing away from them, they look bright and clean. You get close on them. Oh my goodness, ours is so dirty. And we've kind of been putting off giving it a good deep clean because we thought we were gonna have it repainted last year. Then we thought maybe this year we have some renovation projects possibly happening. So we're like, do we spend the money on that or do we wait until we renovate? Uh, I don't know. It's fine, it's fine. It just needs to be cleaned. Uh, and then two, I think I'm going to need to buy new cushions this year for some of our furniture. Uh, it's one of those things that it just, they get gross so fast, but I try to stretch mine. Like we've got probably two or three seasons out of some of those cushions and our cats lay on them, neighborhood cats lay on them. Uh, and then, you know, we have tons of dust and stuff blowing through the air all the time. So they're, they're pretty gross. I don't, I don't, if I don't want to sit on them, I know people who are over here probably don't want to sit on them either. Okay, now that that project is done, we are gonna head to the greenhouse and do some seed planting. What a fun afternoon. I have a feeling that Samantha is going to wake up here pretty quick and she will want to come join us. Okay, I think I've got pretty much everything I need. I'm gonna be using these trays right here, which have 50 cells and they're paper pots. These are from Gardener Supply. Um, so like the clips on the side and the tray are reusable. And of course the paper pots pull apart and you just plant the whole thing in the ground. And this is how they come right here. Look at that, isn't that cool? Tried these out last year and I loved them. Uh, so I think they're gonna work out great for some of these because like marigolds and stuff like that, because these don't need to be in the trays as long as some of our other things. So I think the paper pots will hold. I do have a stack of 24 count trays over there too for the seeds I don't have as many of. Like this one, this is Limon Talinum. I only have 25 seeds of that. All right, so the basket of seeds. So these are all the annual flowers that need to be started, mine anyway, there's a whole bunch more, but the ones I'm gonna be starting four to six weeks before our average 
last frost date. The only ones that I'm not gonna be doing today are the sweet peas, which I will sow in the next few days, but I need to soak those seeds overnight. I forgot to do that yesterday. Uh, so those will be done a different day. Uh, but let's just run through these really quick. The first one I have is, I already mentioned the Limon Talinum, which has a really pretty, um, like rosette of leaves at the bottom uh, that are a bright chartreuse green and then they send up these long stalks with little flowers almost like a you they would remind you of like a hookah bloom i think if i'm remembering that right never grown this one from seed so it should be really interesting they say that the bloom stalks are really good for cutting and they hold really well in a vase then we've got two different types of marigolds we have cracker jacks right here which i direct sow these normally and they come up just great the only benefit of starting them inside is that I don't have to go out to the cut flower garden every day and make sure that things stay watered. Uh, our springs are really windy and our water's not on yet, so I'd have to be out there all the time trying to make sure that that top layer of soil didn't dry out so that these would germinate. Um, so anyway, plus I think that if you're going to be direct seeding these, you would wanna wait until later anyway. So we'll get them started early. And we've got Cracker Jack, which is a tall one, and then White Swan, which is also tall, two and a half to three feet tall. You know, Russell, I just don't know about you sometimes. We've got cherry caramel phlox. I've tried to direct seed this one twice and I've not had good luck with it. So, and that's what's recommended on the packet is to direct seed as soon as soil can be worked in the spring. So it's an early direct seed. Um, darkness is required for germination. I just did not have good luck. So it also says you can sow four to six weeks before last frost. So that's what we're gonna do. The color of these flowers are gorgeous. Then we've got, you know, hold on, Russell, you just gotta have to wait, dude. Then we've got Bronze Queen Nicotiana, which Nicotiana is a really good self seeding annual. If you plant it once, you will have it for many, many years. In fact, it was uh, Florette sent out a beautiful variety called Peach Screamer. If you can get your hands on that one, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, Bronze Queen will be this year's variety along with the other ones that have self seeded themselves. The thing about Nicotiana that you do wanna know is that uh, they are attractive to aphids. So if you wanna use them kind of as a trap crop, which I do out in the cut flower garden, uh, so that they leave other things alone that are more desirable for cutting maybe, this is a really good one to do that. This one in Calendula. We're gonna do some Mignonette, which is a, an amazing filler flower, you guys. This is such a beautiful one. And I think you can succession plant every two weeks for a continual harvest. So maybe if I start it now, and then start another batch of it two weeks from now and so on and so forth, we'll have a lot of harvest. I did notice that the harvest window was not super long on this one. Then we've got two varieties of Calarchia. There's Elegant Salmon and Gray Shell Pink. I've grown Calarchia before, but never from seed. Then we've got Sweet Annie Artemisia. Excellent for cut fresh, uh, cut fresh or dried and good for wreath making. I think I ordered this one year before last and forgot to plant it last year. 500 seeds in this packet, dang. Then we've got corn cockle, which is another really good filler flower, nice and kind of airy white blooms. We've got an edible chrysanthemum. Have you seen that before? I have not. This came from a local supplier, um, Snake River Seed Cooperative, packed with love in Boise, Idaho. So that'll be interesting. Then we've got some Agaratum floss flower, one of you guys sent out to me. I've got several varieties of stock. Uh, so we've got the Quartet Rainbow, Cinder, which is the most amazing stock variety I have ever, ever grown. Uh, they bloom all throughout the entire season. They're not just cold season. And we get pretty hot, like 100 plus degrees and it's dry and there's no protection for these plants out there. And that Quartet Rainbow, oh my gosh, the colors of the sunset. It was one of my favorite ones and they also produced really long stems and they were attractive to pollinators. We've got Cinderella white, iron marine, iron yellow, iron purple, iron apricot, cat's apricot, high double white, cat's lavender blue, cat's white, cat's yellow, another quartet rainbow in there. I'm super glad I got a hold of those seeds because I think they're sold out everywhere. Um, and then vintage brown. 
I don't think I'm going to plant all of those varieties, but those are the ones I have. Then we've got pin cushion flowers, uh, which are amazing. If you can get your hands on the Fama white or Fama blue seeds, those are actually a perennial. Um, so those are already going out in the cut flower garden. I'm not going to start any of those today, but they're my favorite pin cushion flower, flower varieties to start because they've got huge blooms. They produce all through the season and they come back every year. It's amazing. Long stems that are strong, like they are just wonderful for cutting and then their seed heads, their spent blooms after they're done blooming are absolutely gorgeous. In fact, one of these varieties, just the star flower variety is for the seed heads basically. And then we've got Merlot Red and Salmon Rose and Black Knight. And then the last thing I have here is a Silene, Sibella Car Carmine. It looked really interesting. So I only have 25 seeds and it's kind of like a, an airy looking plant. And they say it's really good for hanging baskets and garden containers and a small scale ground cover. We'll try it. So that's the lineup for today. Uh, they're gonna probably all stay out here in the greenhouse because I'm kind of out of room inside, but I think it's staying so warm in here. Did I already tell you it was 92 degrees when I came in here just now? I had to roll the sides up. It's so hot and humid in here, but the seedlings are loving it. So uh, routine stuff here. I'm just going to pre-moisten my seed starting mix. We've got the Spoma organic seed starting mix works great for us. Uh, then we pack our plant trays full of it. I kind of tamp it down, add more if I need to, and then we do our seeds and then a layer of vermiculite over the top. Then I mist it down. I usually use my hose with the, I use a dram wand that has that diffuser at the end. It's a special diffuser, a red one. You buy it separately from your dram wand so you can swap out the one your wand comes with. And it has a ton of holes at the end, which means that it makes your water stream really soft. So it's really easy on seedlings. I do use that after I initially mist everything in because the mister is so extra gentle. I feel like that's a really good way to water until the seeds maybe germinate. That way you don't accidentally dislodge your seeds and have them floating around and that sort of thing. So anyway, let's get going with this. guys it is the next day I ended up having to finish up today because I just ran out of time yesterday afternoon but we got a lot done so there are seven flats right here we've got the elegant salmon clarkia mignonette salmon rose pincushion flower merlot red pincushion flower we've got the gray shell pink clarkia floss flower sweet annie artemisia black knight pincushion flower star flower pincushion flower and then over here we have the Silene. This one is the Nicotiana. These are Sorinth, honeywort, <laughs> that I've been repotting. Uh, vintage brown stock, cat's apricot stock. This one is, oh, I can't read it from here. What is this? Quartet rainbow, whole flat of that. Iron yellow, high double white stock. 
purple stock, marine stock, cat's lavender blue stock. This is the cherry caramel phlox. We have the cracker jack marigold. This is the edible chrysanthemum. And then we have the limon and the white swan marigold. So what we got done is 17 flats, 734 plants, if they all come up, which is amazing. Now, every single cell here has at least two seeds in it. Um, that's typically what I go for. And then uh, we separate sometimes and sometimes we don't, like with the honeywort right here. Let me show you. So with the kiwi blue syrinth or honeywort right here that you're seeing in these containers, I started these inside and I had three six packs total. And, you know, I planted two or three seeds in each one of them. It's just what seeds I had left and what space I had left in a flat. And they pretty much all came up. So I just decided that this is one that I really wanted more of. And they grew pretty leggy because they were under that one light system that I didn't realize that the light was out on one side of the ballast. So anyway, I decided to pop them out. I'm separating them and burying the seedling a little bit deeper or as deep as I can in the container. This was a really tall one. Uh, anyway, they've been in these containers for a couple days, so they've taken to it real well, and I need to finish these up. So sometimes if I feel like I want to have more of a specific plant, if they germinate really well, I will separate them. Uh, but a lot of times in the end, I run out of space in here, and so I just end up thinning them out. I actually need to thin out my snapdragons. That's on the list for this week. They've come up super thick. So I'm going to dome these, everything except for the paper pot trays. Those don't have a dome, uh, but it's so humid and warm in here all the time. Like, I'm kind of dying. I don't know what I was thinking wearing this sweater today, except for it was a lot cooler when I started this morning uh, and I was doing other things outside. Anyway, everything will be domed except for those until they all germinate. As soon as a tray is pretty much all germinated, the dome comes off, but I'm not using any seedling heat mats. In fact, I haven't used heat mats for anything other than the geraniums in the Hartley. I did do that. And then I have a heat mat underneath our butterfly piece, which one has come up so far. I'm very excited. That's one more than last year. So that's pretty much it for this project. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. We still have just a handful of seeds more to plant, like the sweet peas. We'll get those done here. Uh, soon. But anyway, I hope you guys are having a really great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye.